Tonight on Free Minds TV, we'll be doing some follow-up on the story of U.S. troops being withdrawn from Iraq. We'll also be bringing you a story about how the U.S. government is requesting that a number of videos be pulled from YouTube. And coincidentally, we'll be looking into one of those videos on YouTube that the U.S. government might not want you to see from the Occupy Oakland protest where a protester was shot in the face with a tear gas grenade. That plus a whole lot more coming up tonight on Free Minds TV. <laughs> And welcome to a brand new edition of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. With you, as always, is Toby. And Nick. It's the 228th episode, regular episode of the show, or season 6, episode 40. We do some pretty long uh, seasons here, miss a week every now and then, but try to bring you something fresh every single week. Um, so we do have a lot to be getting into. We are going to be getting into a story about uh, the U.S. government, as well as governments all around the world, requesting videos be pulled down from YouTube, as well as some Google pictures and all sorts of, well, essentially governments wanting to censor the internet out there. We'll be getting into that as well as one of those videos that the government might not want you to see. I know it's it's old news by the time you guys are probably seeing it, but... Right. I mean, it's happened. It was almost, by the time this airs, it's right. been almost two weeks, but... But it's important to look yeah. at the video. I, I think a lot of people heard about it, but haven't seen the video yet. So well, we have that coming up, as well as some, maybe some different commentary on it. Um, but first, I want to follow up on a story we talked about last week. I think like most of the major media outlets out there, we didn't do enough homework and digging, and we touted a story last week about the uh, for the troops in Iraq coming home and we touted it as a victory. I was actually very surprised when the story was announced, but still didn't do enough well, digging, just said, yes, this is great news. Finally, I thought we'd be there forever, uh, have combat troops over there and suddenly they're coming home. Well, so they say. I guess they're leaving Iraq. It was a little they're, bit too, too soon to say that the we're US bringing Army the combat troops home. The US is leaving Iraq. We're bringing them out of Iraq but not very far. The U.S. government is going to be pulling pretty much all of its forces, all of its combat forces from Iraq, but instead of bringing them home to the U.S. or even moving them over to Afghanistan and wrapping that whole thing up, they're just going to move them across the border into Kuwait. Now, this force is, I believe they're saying um, 23,000 troops in Kuwait. I believe that's at present. They're gonna be moving more there. Um, and the Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, uh, in the tour of, that he was doing uh, with U.S. forces in Asia, said that the United States had 40,000 troops in the region, including 23,000 in Kuwait, though the bulk of those serve as logistical support for forces in Iraq. What they're going to be doing going forward is they're going to be putting forces that can act as combat forces into Kuwait so that they can react, and this is what they're saying here, so that they can react to a potential um, security collapse in Iraq and what they're not saying so explicitly is that they can be there to act as a hedge against Iran, basically keep Iran encircled. Um, and they're also going to be partnering, partnering with something called the Gulf Cooperation Council, which is a six-nation uh, six organization made up of Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates, and Oman. And really, if, if you look at this any deeper than the, the surface reporting here, uh, it's, it's pretty well known that Saudi Arabia is the counterforce to Iran in the region, and the United States has been acting, uh, basically been treating Saudi Arabia as an ally, even though that's where all the hijackers, pretty much all the hijackers came from for, on September 11th. But regardless, none of them came from Iran. But regardless, apparently Saudi Arabia is an ally, um, at least in as much as they uh, dislike Iran, and th th they're willing to cooperate with the U.S. towards keeping Iran contained. So... It looks like the U.S. presence in the Persian Gulf, Toby, not ending anytime soon. This Gulf Cooperation Council, um, they're saying they're going to try to uh, do more coordination of air patrols, naval patrols, and they'll also be ramping up U.S. naval patrols in the Persian Gulf. So, um, Well, I'm just glad it, we can afford this, Nick. In, in this time where we're supposed to be, the United States government well, is supposed to be slashing trillions of dollars from its budget because there are many trillions in debt. I'm um, sure that we can afford these these high ticket items such as tens of thousands of combat ready troops and getting ready to strike against more countries. And I mean, how long is it going to take the American people to wake up and realize 
that it's impossible to police the world with any success. You create enemies, you kill people, you blow up people, you get in huge amounts of debt, and it doesn't even work. We don't make friends well, that way. You, you, what happened in Afghanistan? What, would Afghanistan be on right. the side of the U.S. if they if the U.S. was to go to war with some of its neighboring countries? No, I mean, the, the President Karzai actually said publicly that Afghanistan would side with Pakistan if a war ever broke out between the U.S. and Pakistan. Not to say that it will, but just think about no. that. We've well, the United States have invested trillions of dollars in this region, and still. The governments that the United States have propped up still don't like us very much. So it's not working. It's expensive. It kills innocent people. I say enough is enough. How many people have learned about this follow-up news article? I barely found it. If it wasn't for doing this show, I wouldn't have known about it because I was going on the internet doing some show content, finding some stuff. I didn't hear about this news article on any of the big news outlets that told me that we were withdrawing troops from Iraq. I just heard that we're bringing the troops home. No follow-up on this that I've heard of. So how many other Americans out there don't even know about this? Yet it's happening with their tax money. Well, I guess not their tax money so much as borrowed money against their future tax earnings. But it's ridiculous, yeah. Nick. How well, long until the American people say is enough is enough? We want to know what's going on with foreign policy. Uh, <laughs> and maybe we want to change well, it. Well, it's been, it's been a long time and that hasn't happened. So we'll, we'll see. But... Uh, I mean, it's you're right, Toby. It's not a very good way to make friends, and you're and you know the friends that you are made temporarily, which are really just countries that the U.S. Is, let's not kill ourselves. It's just countries that the U.S. is um, using basically to further their ends. Uh, they turn on you with a, a fair amount of, of frequency. Remember that Iraq used to be an ally of the U.S. Right, and let's not we, we say further their ends. Down, right, you say right. further their ends, but whose ends are being furthered? The United States government. Or is it some rich corporations out there that are getting rich from this and some arms dealers and all this other stuff? I, you, know, I've heard, you know what I have seen for news articles from some of the big media outlets? The U.S. economy is going to be suffering because arms dealers aren't going to be able to make enough weapons if we're withdrawing too many troops. That would be a tragedy, wouldn't it? If we had to shut down some of these arms-making plants, put Americans out of work who are, who are making bombs to blow people up. You know what? That's what hit the big news media this week, not this story. So it's, it, it makes you wonder who controls the media, who, who these foreign interests really are, because you, let me tell you, Nick, being at, in the Middle East, having troops there is not in my best interest. It's not in your best interest. Whose best interest is it in? Most of the enemies that we have in the Middle East, I mean, people say, well, you need them there because of all these radicals. The radical, there might still be radical, you know, Islamic extremists in the Middle East, um, who wanted to carry out bombings against U.S. for a religious agenda. But were it not for U.S. intervention over the last several decades in the Middle East, there wouldn't be animosity between the U.S. and Iran. The reason there's animosity between the U.S. and Iran is that we kept a dictator in power for, in Iran for years. The backlash to that was the Islamic Revolution in Iran. That's why the radicals took power. Because of the U.S. government. Because of our policies. Odds are that there would be a much more well-adjusted westernized country that respected human rights if it wasn't for the U.S. government. But at the time, the U.S. government was worried about hedging against the Soviet Union. So there was a different bad guy at the time, and we decided to use Iran and keep a dictator in power over its people. And we wanted access to things like oil fields in the Middle East. So there were a lot of, a lot of things that went into it. But it's not surprising if you actually look at U.S. foreign policy, the history of it, not much has changed. We're still doing the same things we were doing during the Cold War. The problems we have today are almost entirely, in my opinion, a result of the interventions we entered into during the Cold War. So 20, 30, 40 years down the line, we're still going to be dealing with repercussions from this. Whether we end up screwing the Saudi people or the Egyptian people or the Syrians, whoever we end up screwing over next, they're likely to hold a grudge. I think Americans forget that it's kind of a big deal when we take, you know, when we back a coup or we assassinate somebody. It might not be a big deal to us. Most Americans don't know this. They're, they're more preoccupied with, you know, professional sports or with their day-to-day -day life or with their professional work. Most Americans don't even know that a lot of these interventions took place over the years. They did. There's no dispute that they did. A lot of Americans don't even realize it. People in those countries who suffered under a dictatorship for years that was backed up and kept in power by the U.S., they remember, they're angry, and occasionally they're going to try to blow you up. 
Uh, that's just what happened. It, it's if you we're the ones in large part who've decided to play this game of using violence and trying to topple governments, Toby. So it's not surprising to me when other groups are going to attempt to do it back. The more we play this game, the more people who are playing against us. I don't see how that's a win for anybody. No, except for some very rich corporations, some arms, arms dealers, dealers, and. Um, it's, it's disgusting, yeah. You're right. I think the reason we do put up with it is because it doesn't really affect us that much. Or at least we don't perceive it to affect us because, trust me, having trillions of dollars in debt and having soldiers coming back wounded and with all sorts of uh, messed up psychological issues they're going to have to deal with and all of society's going to have to deal with. definitely cost. It's definitely going to cost us, but it's not immediate cost that we notice in the moment like they are noticing over there in the Middle East. That's why they're they're getting they're holding grudges immediately. It's going to take us some time to right. really notice those costs because they're like kind of woven in. They're they're secretly woven into well, our society, whereas they're very obvious out right. uh, and in the war zones. Yeah, and it's not like past wars where the war costs were more obvious right up front because it's an all volunteer force, so people aren't seeing their friends get drafted who don't want to enter into the service. So there's that that takes a lot of the you know the public scrutiny off of it. Um, they're largely financing this through racking up an enormous deficit. You want to know why the national debt has exploded over the last several years? The main factor, the main thing that has changed, and domestic spending has ballooned too. I mean, government's growing all over the place. But if you want to look at the thing that has really caused this out-of-control explosion in the national debt, it's military spending. And that's the one area that neither side is willing to cut. Yeah, you the, look at the, things, the Republican side is at least talking right. about cuts. I don't think they'll do Not it. The military, but they no. take the military off the table, yeah. and the Democrats just, at least right now, it seems the direction they they're just going give their is, their commander in chief well, the Nobel Prize, or yeah. I guess it's not the Americans. Well, let's just raise taxes some as more. As long as he has the, well, yeah. the Nobel Peace Prize, we're not really at war, right? Right. Uh, it, and government spending is good in that camp too, so they're certainly not going to question the spending. I mean, they, a lot of Democrats don't like war, but. You know, overall, well, the government the ones in an office issue. seem to. Yeah, I mean, the politicians do. I right. think the Democratic base does. The liberals but, out there. Right. Yeah, but you know, it, what's amazing about this is you have this all this debt, and we the the Republican candidates just they're not talking about bringing the troops home. And that fact, that's something that has to be off the table is withdrawing from the Middle East. Uh, aside from the uh, you know the uh, candidates who aren't getting noticed, Gary Johnson, who's practically gotten zero zero media attention and Ron Paul who's still being marginalized still being kept out of most polls and most talk when you hear about the candidates being talked about um, yet these fiscal conservatives fine spend the military um, the go to war that's fine anyways it's it's yucky. We've talked about it a lot. I did want to vent it out there because you'd think that well, people would be up in arms still, well, yeah, but they're not. I, especially I, that, that last point you made about fiscal conservatives, because there's, I've always thought that was one of the biggest inconsistencies out there. If you're somebody who doesn't believe that government does a good job of solving problems here at home, if you don't think government really does, provides great solutions at reasonable costs for things like education, healthcare, etc., you don't want the government running your life at home, why does it make sense to say, Government is inefficient, not effective at, at making positive change, unless they're doing it with guns and people are dying as a result overseas. I've never understood that leap. You start k killing people in other countries and all of a sudden the government becomes highly effective. That's never made sense to me. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's, a pr it's just a, an unsound position. I don't think you can reconcile that. Does it disconnect there? Anyways, I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to continue this conversation in the next coming episodes, months, weeks, years. We won't be out of Afghanistan for at least a few, a couple more years. No, so. and apparently we're not really out of Iraq. We're just across the border. So, anyways, unfortunately, I'm sure many people out there, it's like even though the duty free shop in Canada, it's crazy. A lot of the people who view our show, it. Nick, are already the informed audience. Yet we're informing many people about this Iraq issue. It, that's what just blows my mind about this whole thing. The the media yeah, blackout. And we're not. I mean, we're not journalists. No, we're just, we just commentating for, on it. Right. Anyways, moving right along, uh, let's talk about government censorship. Because one thing that governments, not just the United States government, but governments all over the world, like to do is, well, control what the consumers, their people, um, what they what they see. And uh, we've talked a lot about that, and most of the media concentrates on 
China as the ideal example of government censorship. They have the, the government controls what content they view on the web. But guess what? To a certain extent, so does the US government and many other Western governments as well. Um, this article that I'm reading this from is from a a website that's not so reputable. So I would d definitely encourage you to Google some of this stuff and find some more news stories. Um, I did do a little bit of research, so I know that the, the basis of this is true, but for, for the facts here, I can, can say that I'm not standing on absolute solid footing. I know that the, some of the basics are very true, but for some of the exact figures, I'd say do your own research. But the fact here is that US, the US authorities are asking Google and YouTube and other internet websites to remove content from the internet that they deem offensive towards the government. US authorities have hit Google with a 70% rise in takedown orders. Uh, the number of takedown orders received by Google from authorities based in the United States rose dramatically in the past year, with demands to remove information, including videos containing government criticisms, increasing by 70%. In the US, Google received 757 takedown requests, according to the website v3.co.uk. US authorities also called for the removal of 113 videos from YouTube, including several documenting alleged police brutality, which Google refused to take down. So bravo to Google for refusing to take down some of those videos. Um, apparently, they did take down a good 63% of the videos that they were asked to, though. So they did refuse on some of them, but did, take down, did comply with others. Um, it looks like the number of items requested to be removed by the US authorities, and this is where I say to do your own research because it just seems crazy to me, is sevenfold the number requested to be rem removed by the Chinese authorities. So a government that censors the internet, China, according to this article, is, um, is asking Google to take down fewer videos and YouTube to take down fewer videos than the US government, which is supposedly has complete freedom of speech, freedom of the internet. Um, it is interesting that Google, Google's news, uh, newly released transparency report, which they are releasing all the requests about US data requests by US authorities, um, is where this is coming from. So that's how I, how I know it's legitimate. They don't say which videos have been asked to remove and whether they complied with their requests. They just give data out there. So I wonder, Nick, we have had several requests to take down videos um, that, that our videos are banned in the US. It doesn't say why on some of them. I wonder if some of those are because of our government criticisms. I don't know. There's millions of videos on the US, so we'll never know. But there are several videos, Free Minds TV episodes, that you can't view on, on YouTube because YouTube has taken them down. They claim that it's, it, sometimes they do it for copyright infringement, but some of the videos I've been checking, zero copyright infringement going on there. Nothing that could be alleged as such they're gone. Interesting. It's interesting. Well, I think if somebody lodges a complaint, I mean, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there just doesn't like the show very much. Maybe it's somebody watching right now. They're going to watch it and then they're going to ask him to take it down. I don't know. It just makes you wonder how much, how much government filtering of news is out there, not only here in the US, but all over the world. What are people really getting? It's well, in most, parts weird. Of the, in, in most parts of the world, the government actually runs the media directly to a large extent. I mean, you've got BBC, Deutsche Welle, and, and some countries are better than others, at least in theory, about keeping these organizations independent, but they're government-funded agencies. And there's, you know, a lot of places in the world it's out in the open. Here in the U.S., we're told that we have a free press, and I think to a large extent we still do, Toby, yep. but there's yep. certainly... There certainly has been pressure in recent years to try to tamp down on people who are outside of the, the approved news channels, the it major networks and the major papers. What confuses me, Nick, is 757 takedown requests is not that large. It's not a whole lot. So why do they bother? There's millions of videos that criti right. criticize the government out there, millions of news stories. Right. And there's probably, what is it about in many these... cases, even if they do a takedown, somebody puts up a slightly right. different version. Right. They, or there's uh, 10 there's versions ton, out there. plenty of mirrors. So right. it just makes me wonder, why do they bother with those ones? So it's a good weird. question. It is very, very weird. It also, um, something that's uh, more eerie than this, I think, is uh, Google releases their number of uh, authorities, uh, the amount of times authorities requested 
um, data from individual Google users, and that's up 29% in the US over last year, which it doesn't give a number of how many requests that is, but it's much larger than 757. So there, the government is requesting data from Google, which is very, this is where we talk about Fourth Amendment stuff. We've talked about how third party sites can sell um, the U.S. government information that the government right, can go and get Right, about who uploaded the own. video and things like that. But it looks like the government can also just request that right. data if they want it. So where's the Fourth Amendment? Where is this? Right, it's an end run around. You yeah. can just request the that Google give you the information and now they can just have yeah. Google spy on you instead. Right, and there's no... They don't even need to pay for the data. They just tell Google to give it over. Yeah, and there's no probable cause requirement there because Google isn't, uh, you know, they're not working for a court system at least in theory, they're just a, they're a private company, but then the government can go to that private company that didn't need probable cause to gather the data or anything like that, and they can purchase it from them. Or just ask for it. Right. In, these, in this circumstance, they're right. just saying, we need that data as a suspicious person, I'll give us the data. Right. It's very convenient. Mm. And I mean, we're increasingly living in a world where all of our financial transactions are, you know, messages between each other, the media that we view, it's all online and there's a record for that. So it's easier and easier for the government to keep track of what you're watching. It's not like when you were watching cable TV and you know, they actually have to put a camera in your home or a microphone or something to figure out what channel you were watching if, if they had a reason to do that. And I don't know that they're doing that now, but if they wanted to compile that kind of information today with the technology that exists, it'd be far easier, Toby. Yeah. Does make me wonder though, what can, once again, there's millions of people in the US using the internet. What can they really, uh, picking off a few here and there? Makes me wonder what Maybe the it's true. A test run. Makes me wonder what the true yeah. motives are. It's, it's, uh, it's just eerie to think about. Anyways, we do have a video we have to get into um, about, yeah. well, it's a little a bit YouTube older. Video. It's a YouTube video coming of uh, some alleged, uh, we should say alleged, right? We don't want to have our, our video taken down because of defamation, right? Or libel or whatnot. Whatever the terminology is, Nick, this is alleged police abuse. We'll let you, the viewer, um, decide whether it's police or abuse or not, I guess. Let's show the clip. What I saw there, Nick, is you, and many people have seen this. This is in uh, California, Oakland, California, where there was a part of the Occupy Wall Street protest. Protesters were asked to disperse. I think there were a couple of, little under 200 of them were asked to disperse. The police surrounded them and then uh, shot tear gas at them. One protester went down and it looks like his buddies went to help him when one of the officers there, you can see, threw another tear gas canister. That was actually a flashbang grenade. A flashbang gr uh, yeah. grenade. Oh, yeah. all right. Same thing that SWAT teams use to clear buildings. Well, what's the purpose of that? Uh, uh, it causes temporary hearing loss and vision loss. Well, wasn't the tear gas dispersing the people? Yeah. Well, the tear gas was dispersing the people until they shot somebody in the head with one of the tear gas canisters. So people and went to help him, though. Yeah. So they lobbed a grenade at them. Well, that's not very nice. No, I mean, I, it, it's really... There it goes. You yeah, I mean, it. there's really if clearly... It's very intentional. That's no accident. No, there, yeah, they, that was, a, I mean, I hate to say it, but that was a good shot. So, I mean... <laughs> that looks like it would be painful, Nick. Yeah, I mean, it's, it lo looks a little malicious to me, Toby. Kind of seems like going for blood when you're lobbing flashbang grenades at the people who are just trying to help the person that you just... Well, you just... Fr it was actually... Scott Olson was the name of the guy. He served two tours... Of duty in Iraq, and he was there protesting with Veterans for Peace. Um, and I don't know, maybe he caught the tear gas canister by accident. Maybe it hit him in the head by accident. But they're clearly maliciously targeting the protesters who are trying to help him when he's critically injured. Um, as of the time we're reporting this, as far as the information I have right now, um, he's recovering, but he's still not able to speak. Uh, he can communicate by writing and things like that, but it damaged the communication center of his brain, caused a skull fracture where he, where he caught the tear gas cancer. But when I see the Oakland Police Department 
basically just out for blood and try. And I don't know what else, what other justification you're offering there. Out for blood and basically just trying to take a few more people out who are trying to help the wounded. Um, it makes me wonder whether maybe one of the officers in that line saw if he could try to hit somebody with a canister too. Doesn't seem that far fetched. Haven't they learned their lesson? We've shown videos of them doing similar things in the past over the years, Nick. And I, you'd think by this time they would learn that it doesn't get them much good publicity. Yeah, but what's happened so far? I mean, the, Nothing, the, the I mayor guess. in Oakland has has said that uh, they're looking into this and this was unacceptable. Which, and blah, like blah, he blah, said blah. every single Will time. Will anybody ever get fired? No. I, because they're, they're essentially, you can't tell who they are, they're stormtroopers. Right. So how are you supposed to, t yeah, we see that it's one of them doing it. We saw, yeah, we saw gone. that in the Oakland police officer. It office. was uh, Did it. anonymous Oakland police officer. Right. Yay. Uh, it's, now, I want why, to why was about, No, well, and they were clearing this street, by the way, just because the city didn't like the protest there. there, there from all the reading I did, there was not property damage going on. People weren't charging the police barricades. This is what they do now. If well, they don't like that you gather, they're launching tear gas and they were using beanbag projectiles, basically rubber bullets, as well as flashbang grenades. Less than lethal force. Right. Well, I think it's what it was it. nearly lethal in, in this they, case. They, uh, to be fair, though, they, uh, the reports do allege that protesters did throw stuff at them after they were shot with tear gas as well. So I just want to throw that after out they there were as shot well. With tear gas, right? Yeah. So that's what I wasn't there. I've seen some of the videos. The videos to me look like a police force cracking down on people. They look like something you'd see out of some sci-fi movie of the future or something. But I guess okay. this is what the American public wants because they're footing the bill, right? I, it must be because this stuff, this crap's been going on for well, it's not years. Just, it's not just Oakland either. I right. mean, we've seen crackdowns across Plenty. the country. Whether you like the protesters, you don't. You agree well, with the I messages, disagree. I, I disagree with a lot of the messages coming out of the protest. I don't even understand them personally. I think well, it's, it's great that people are protesting. But whether you like them or not, that's what this country is supposed to be all about. Right. Is the First Amendment the ability to go and protest in a public sphere? And this is the response that they're yeah. running into And now. it's increasingly the response you get no matter what you're protesting, no matter what your group is. If you're protesting in a major metro, especially if you don't get permits and you just assemble, it's increasingly the response you get, whether it's New York or it's Boston or it's Philadelphia or it's DC I was gonna or say, Oakland or Denver all or this any most major metros. With we, the all of those it is, you know where there's the most job security? As a stormtrooper. Because as people get mad, they're gonna protest and there's gonna need more stormtroopers to crack down on them, Nick. That's, that's that's where it's at. You want job security? That's somewhat true. All of those cities we meant, I just mentioned, though, we've reported on stories of similar crackdowns coming out of those cities. So I wasn't just it's all over pulling those names out of the air. We're out of time, Nick. If you have different thoughts, let us know. Contact us. Freemindstv.com is the address. Until next week, it's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good week.